Have you ever wondered how those suits of armor were made back in medieval times, or for that matter, the ancient jewelry worn back in Egyptian times? Well, it was a very painstaking process, but a process that's still practiced today. That's what Teresa Bush discovered in the studio of a Watertown artist. Here, inside what used to be the loading alley for Coca-Cola bottling, is where Susan Thornton makes one-of-a-kind pieces of jewelry. She opened this studio on Watertown's West Main Street in 2008, after spending more than 15 years in Nashville. The buildings were great. The ambiance, the people that I met, everybody was like, oh, you need to come to Watertown. We'd love to have you here. We love artists. There's so many of us here. And I thought, you know, this would be a really nice place to have a studio and a teaching facility so that I would have plenty of like-minded individuals. Most every day of the week, Susan's in here hammering, cutting, heating, and stretching metals, mostly sterling silver. Those things sound more like a great way to destroy jewelry, but this is how you do it, the very old-fashioned way. These techniques go back over 5,000 years. I use the same tools as a blacksmith. I have tons of different hammers. They all have different little faces on them. They all have different uses. While those techniques are the way of antiquity, there are a couple of things Susan does the modern way. The heat she uses to make the metal move comes from a torch not from coals and embers inside a huge furnace. And she buys her metals ready-made instead of melting them herself. It's just faster and a lot safer. It can be done completely by hand, and it has been for centuries. Susan's work begins with an idea. She transfers that to everyday writing paper and then makes a pattern from the very same piece of paper. And the idea of the paper is kind of like the idea of a piece of sheet. And if I can move that paper in a certain way, then I believe in my head that I might be able to move that metal in that way. So I play with paper and how it can move and change and fold and create once the piece is made, Susan puts her own mark on each item through texturing techniques. They include scratching and sanding, and it's become her trademark. I like to mix the textures, all like maybe a little edge on the side that's highly shined, then some part of it that's got like this rough bark texture, and then another part of it that's got this like pebbly texture. So what is it about jewelry that draws Susan in? She says it's the fact that everybody can enjoy jewelry and also the fact that it lasts and lasts. I like the idea of permanence. You can't drop it and break it. You might bend it, but it's fixable. Nothing about it is not fixable. I mean, it can be melted down and totally remade, but it can be fixed. It's the closest thing we wear on our skin is jewelry. Not clothing, because you change that all the time, but you might wear the same piece of jewelry for years, and then it becomes a part of your persona. And that idea was a really interesting one for me. Of all the things Susan makes, this is the piece that gets the most comments. Ladies who lived in the 6th century AD wore this jewelry on their body just like this, but it wasn't just for looks. This body piece, as Susan calls it, was used to make the woven fabric the women wore back then, which was never cut, look more feminine by scrunching the fabric to show off a woman's waistline. It's an interesting way to incorporate a necklace and a belt. I get things from, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like it, to a few, uh, raised eyebrows, but then I explain it, and then they're just amazed by, why hasn't anybody thought of that before? And so then it's a teachable moment to educate the people who come by, and maybe they'll take from that thinking, you know, they wore odd things back then too. 
Teaching is something Susan has come to really enjoy over the years. That's one of the reasons she moved her studio from Nashville to the more affordable town of Watertown. Here, Susan has plenty of room to help a large group or just one person at a time. I love to teach workshops because it does no good if you're the only one who knows how to do it because you can't further the craft without teaching what you know and that's why I like to do it. 